It's a busload of Bulldogs making their way to Sanford Stadium and Jake Fromm, the part of the dog walk for third rank Georgia. Kirby Smart leading them out between the hedges coming off that huge road win at Carolina last week. We'll go to Miko on the left side, catches it 30, 20, pulls away 10, 5, touchdown Miko Hartman. Here's Holyfield stepping over man and diving into the end zone, touchdown Georgia. Fromm going to give it to Harry and Bryant, and slides right through an opening and into the end zone, touchdown. That was an absolute dominating quarter of football by Georgia. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. And a game that was originally scheduled for tonight moved up to noon due to Hurricane Florence undefeated Georgia taking on Middle Tennessee out of Conference USA. And we are ready to go. Middle Tennessee winning the toss and deferring, so it will be the Georgia offense set to roll right away. Miko Hardman will be the deep man here for the Bulldogs. And Brian Harrion is also back there. He's one of the up guys around the five. Matt Bonadies will kick it away. And Hardman will let that bounce over his head for the touchback. So the Georgia offense ready to roll under the direction of Jake Fromm, the sophomore. 14 and two now as a Georgia starter. I really like this young man. He's done a great job. He really has mastered the playbook, commands this offense, and his intellect at the line of scrimmage, reading defenses, may be one of the best in college football. There is a flag, too, on the return. The play was over. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 25 on the receiving team. Uh, the penalty is half the distance to the goal. Unsportsmanlike penalty against Akeel Crumpton of Georgia, the senior out of Philly. And that will push the Bulldogs back. One change up front on the O-line. With the injury last week to Andrew Thomas, left tackle. The freshman out of Knoxville with his first career start. It's Cade Mays today. And DeAndre Swift offset in the backfield. DeAndre will get the call. One of uh, probably four guys we'll see carrying the mail today. And, and they today. all bring something special to this offense. Swift is the most complete back, in my opinion. He can catch the ball, he can break tackles, and he can be explosive and break away with speed. So a heavy dose of all the backs today for Georgia with this undersized Middle Tennessee line. A couple of touchdowns on the ground this year for DeAndre. Everybody was able to get in on the act last week on the ground against Carolina. Swift wrapped up by DQ Thomas. It's a pretty solid group of linebackers with Thomas, Harris, and Brooks. Yeah, Harris is the captain, uh, one of their top tacklers uh, on the season early on. He was a former strong safety, was a quarterback in high school, bulked up, and they really like what he brings. He'll be up in the line quite a bit. Middle Tennessee will get linebackers up at the line of scrimmage, try to confuse Georgia up front in those certain situations, in particular third downs. An offside penalty called there against Middle Tennessee. Uh, they will be outsized. They're going to have to rely heavily on their speed and guile today to try and slow down a Georgia offense, which has scored over 40 points in each of its first two games. More of Swift for the first down. Daryl Randolph with the hit. The a look at DeAndre against South Carolina, the 64 yards rushing. And, you know, the biggest thing about him is uh, with yards after the catch in the passing game and breaking tackles. Sometimes when you think you wrap him up, he can break a free and make bigger plays. So he is a tough back to bring down. Beth Mullins, Anthony Becton, Rocky Boyman with you today here in Athens. This is Elijah Holyfield, his first touch. And let's check in with Rocky. Yeah, Anthony, you mentioned earlier about the smaller stature of MTSU's defense. Only one 300-pounder, the nose tackle, 96 Collins. I expect them to, and we've already seen it, lots of pre-snap and post-snap movement trying to confuse that big Georgia offensive line. 
penetrating gaps. It's exactly right, Rocky. They're, they're undersized, but if they have their quickness and can hit those gaps, maybe some of those young linemen like left tackle Cade Mays, a freshman, they could be disruptive. Vander Holyfield, his father, is impressed. It got him out of his seat early. Offensive line averages 340 pounds the right side. Even with the movement, there's a problem with that because gaping holes can open up. Elijah Holyfield hits it big and gets himself a huge run to start this game. 66 yards behind Kinley and Gilliard in the middle. Watch out. And Anthony, what I saw right there is the defensive line moved, and it looked like the linebackers were confused. That's the problem with movement as a linebacker. You're not quite sure which gap the D lineman's in, which new gap you have, and I think that's why they got gashed. And you better have that mesh together as a unit, communication-wise, because the big plays will happen because of that movement. He nearly matched his career high for a game with that one rush. Now it's Harrion in the backfield, and he'll come out to make the catch. Lunges down to the five-yard line. It's going to bring up third and goal. Khalil Brooks was there defensively. It's amazing how deep they can go at the running back position on any down, any distance. I mean, you think a guy like Swift would be in, in the red zone, and Harrion takes the snaps, getting down in there deep. So they have a lot of confidence with their players. Now bring in Swift to do some of the dirty work inside the five-yard line. Pressure coming off the edge from with time. Touchdown goals. Third TD of the season for Hartman and Fromm with his fourth touchdown pass. They set it up on the ground, finish it off in the air. Seven plays, 87 yards in three and a half minutes, and a 7 0 lead for Georgia. Started with Elijah Holyfield banging his way through the offensive line, making a big play. Dad's giving some punches out like he did back in the day, and then you close it out. He's virtually impossible to guard in the slot. Miko Cole with the touchdown. A lot of different parties involved on that scoring drive. The key run, though, Elijah Holyfield, 66 yards to help set up the score from to Miko Hartman. Beth Mowens, Anthony Becht. We've got Rocky Boyman with us as well. And Georgia, as expected, coming out and showing their strength early. It is. I mean, they have an offensive line that weighs 330 pounds across the board. Gilliard at center, Cleveland at right guard. These guys just punish players up front. And they have a lot of depth there. And the running backs, all they have to do is get through the hole. But they make the magic happen in the second level. And with this undersized Middle Tennessee defense, and they're going to fight hard and they're going to do their best, that will be the biggest challenge as we get especially into the later part of this game. All right, so for Middle Tennessee, they're going to go tempo, and they've got one of the best quarterbacks to do that in Brent Stockstill, the redshirt senior out of Murfreesboro, playing for his father, Rick, the head coach down his 13th season, knows this offense inside and out now in his 34th game. I love this kid. He's tough as nails. I mean, he tries to put everything on his shoulders. He's very crafty in the pocket, folks. He's going to be a hard catch, a movable passer. The biggest question is the internal clock. When the pass rush is coming down on him, can he release the ball on time and not take the hits he did like two weeks ago against Vanderbilt? I'll roll him out and the left-hander. A throw to Brad Anderson and a pickup of five, Rocky. Beth, you mentioned the up-tempo that MTSU does. Two challenges for Georgia's defense. One, you got to get lined up because you're not lined up. They're going to snap that ball, and you're going to be out of position. And secondly, it's yards after catch. They're going to complete some passes. This Georgia defense has to swarm and get to the ball. Stock still will keep. May have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Jay Hayes and Tyler Clark with the tackle. 
and defensive line becomes an important part of this team. Losing Atkins last year, that's a big person to replace over the football. Now on third down, does Middle Tennessee have the protection it needs to get the, the yards needed for first down on this pass opportunity? Pressure coming right up the middle. Stocksdale's pass is away. It's caught by Patrick Smith right around the line to gain. Now, Patrick Smith's a fifth-year senior. He's got to know to get the proper depth. This is going to be really tight and may be short of the first down. Now it gets up fourth. He got a beautiful route on the inside. He just cuts it too short of the line of scrimmage. These are the small things. Uh, Stockstill, Coach Stockstill said we have to play perfect. Well, if you play perfect, you got to be important with the details. Right there, a fifth-year senior doesn't get the proper depth for a first down. Bonadies on the punt. Akeel Crumpton is back at his own 20 for Georgia. And he's telling his uh, buddies to let that one bounce. And it takes a nice Blue Raider turn or two. And all the way down to stop at the 10, a 56-yard punt. Urbanides and a 7-0 Georgia lead early. The second year in a row that Georgia came up with a huge Week 2 road win. Of course, last year it was up in South Bend to beat Notre Dame. And last weekend down to Columbia, over to Columbia, excuse me, for the big win against South Carolina. That third quarter dominance, 21 zip. And 226 yards of total offense in about 12 minutes. Talking to Kirby Smart, he wasn't real sure how good South Carolina is. You, you beat a big team, he, he's going to need more information on them as they play their schedule. But uh, I think he feels a little, you know, he feels really good about what his team did last week. It's a second straight miscue on special teams for Akeel Crumpton. So that sets the dogs back. And uh, Rocky, I think you saw put a keel in the doghouse, no? Yeah, that's, that's exactly the right terminology. I was, I was standing right here when that happened. And look, Kirby's message is that play may not hurt us here in this game, but at some point during the season, during you know a critical time in the game, you don't feel that punt. That gives our chance less of an opportunity to win. You got to coach them up on everything, right? When you're as good as Georgia, you know, you're going to find some of the smaller details are the most important. And Kirby doesn't miss a beat, man. Anytime he has a chance to coach up the players, he's going to coach them, and he's going to coach them hard. And, Anthony, I'm sure my coaches in the league have told me, I'm sure they told you, it's you, it's the little things that lose the game. Everyone talks about the big plays. The big plays kind of take care of themselves. It's those little ones. You don't make them. They get you beat. It's a third and four here after the tackle by Malik Manseal. Georgia scoring and uh, moving it will on its first possession. And now the Blue Raiders trying to put the brakes on them. And Holyfield's not going to let them. Another big run, but a flag down behind the play. And this may be coming back. 21-yard gain as it stands right now. They had a hold on Mays here on the edge. Holding on the offense, number 77. 10 yards from the previous spot, replay, third down. That's the true freshman, Beth. He's in, in place. He's on the outside here, number 77, the big boy. He's going to try to come in. He's going to try to probably hook him in with his left arm. Very clean, easy to see for the official. Just got to keep those hands inside. When you step inside as a lineman and you get him locked in, then you got to pop your body to the left of him to trap him with your body. He tried to do it with his arm, and a good defender will get on the outside of him and make a big play. There's Andrew Thomas, who had started the, uh, the last 17 games for Georgia. So a sophomore replaced by a freshman. They're, they are still going with four underclass O-linemen, but they are big guys, 6'5". Over 325, their average. Third down and long. From, from the end zone, ball is out. And the dogs able to get it. Ben Cleveland jumps on it at the two. It was Jamal Jones getting pressure on the quarterback for the strip. We'll take taking advantage of the left side right here's here's k Mays. you just made a mistake son now how do you come back this is the inexperience a low undersized player dips underneath the tackle and he's able to make a big play these are the small things that middle tennessee has to continue to take advantage of nice job by them on that pass rush 
Well, you have to punt out of the back of the end zone. Jake Camarda would tie Lee back deep. Blue Raiders are going to have a short field. Lee down around the 35, a return of six after the 41-yard punt. Let's go to the redshirt senior. He's already got his undergrad and his master's degree. One of seven FBS guys to play for dad. He's also a heck of a baseball player. And one of three FBS players to enter the season already with a master's in leisure, sport, and tourism. You know, he's all over the field, and his dad has coached him well. He's a tough competitor. His father lets him play the way he does every single snap. I compared him to a kid that takes fun dip and pours it into a five-hour energy <laughs> bet, shakes it up, and then drinks it throughout the game because that's his, the activity you get from him on the field. Oh, the fun dip with the little piece of sugar scoop. Nice. Well, there, there are the numbers. That active. He is number one career touchdown passes. Stock still is. He's number three active yards. And oh, by the way, did we mention Dad Rick was a quarterback himself in the early days of Bobby Bowden down at Florida State. So it's a, it's a family tradition. And you just saw, saw uh, Shatan Mo, uh, Mobley, the running back, 235 pounds, number 44. He's going to be a big back, and they're a little worried about him. Georgia's side, tackling a big back, taking that pound. These undersized speed linebackers of Georgia have to come up big. Do they have the size to get the short yardage on third down? I like the patience, Beth. And they're going to call a timeout. Trying to convert to keep the drive alive when we come back. By Hampton, by Hilton, it's Nick Saban and number one Alabama heading to Oxford to take on Ole Miss tonight at 7 Eastern, 6 Central on ESPN and on the ESPN app. Tua and Ta'amu getting set to tussle. Yeah, you know, Ta'amu's been a very good player. Those 392 yards, Beth, are second in college football right now. He's having a fantastic start to the season. Third and short with a D lineman Liggins in at fullback. Going to go with the jet sweep, the throw back to Stockton. He's thrown for a big loss and a flag down as well. Of that business from middle. Illegal formation on the offense. Five players in the backfield. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. You know, Beth, third and one in this situation, if you got a a trick play one you better have practiced and lined up in it correctly they try to do a little bit of a jet sweep throwback to the tight side of the field to me you got too much speed on georgia with one yard to go and a defensive lineman in the backfield let's hand it off it looks like in this area now they may go for it on fourth nine or a potential quick kick by the quarterback in this situation but they have nothing to lose in that situation but you go from fourth and third and one to fourth and nine it's tough And they will go. Stocks there. Intercepted. Picked off by Baker. And he returns it out across midfield. Thirty yards on the return. And how about back-to-back -back Baker making plays? There's one guy that Stock still has to be aware of when you attack that side. Triple stack by the wide receivers. They tried to pull the DBs out, but Baker's not fooled. He's staying home. He understands his responsibility. He's a senior. He came back for a reason, Beth. He's going to be one of the top cornerbacks taken in this draft in the upcoming year, and he's as smart as they come when you're talking about trick formations. Well, and not only that, uh after not converting, turning it over on fourth down. Now Georgia's set up in Blue Raider territory with Brian Harry and the deep man in the eye. And now Nauta will step up to the line. Tyler Simmons comes in tight as well. And Harry with the nice cutback. Simmons setting the edge for him. 
Some shake, some bake, and inside the 30 for Brian Harrion and a run of 21. Nice job. Cade Mays get a lot of activity today. He's blocking down as his lineman shoots. Now he pulls him in and gets his body in front of him. Now he can make the big block on an undersized defensive lineman in Jones, who's 255 pounds. Back to Herrion. Now we got a flag. I think they're going to get the tight end, Charlie Werner, for a, a hold. Holding on the offense, number 89. 10 yards from the previous spot. Replay, first down. You know, tight ends were uh, of kind of my disposal this week as I watched him for Georgia. Jim Chaney, my former tight end coach with the Rams, he now coaches the tight ends. The one thing about Warner, he's gotten himself out of uh, technique and position with his hands and his feet. He's jumping on players too quick, and he's been getting pushed back, and he has a hold on that play, has to get better on that. They're short tight ends too, Beth, so he's going to play a major role in this game. Looking to trips right. Hardman, the receiver screen, and bottled up quickly by Daryl Randolph. Hardman, who has uh, had himself a breakout start to the season. The 59-yard touchdown against Austin P. a 34-yard score in South Carolina last weekend. And Randolph's helmet popped off. They're short, Beth, in the secondary. Two safeties are down. They're mixing a lot of players in. You could get burned on one play when your starter's out for a snap. Yeah, they're missing three of the four potential starters today. Going we'll to see if James Cook can make something happen. Staying in bounds, coming back at the 10. And they're going to rule Cook out back outside the 20 yard line. But a glimpse of how exciting this youngster can be. Well, James Cook is fantastic out of the backfield. They had a little fake slip on the other side. But Cook has got tremendous speed. He's very good with his hands. You'll see a lot of dual backs with him and Swift in the backfield making a big play. Third down and a few. Play clock's winding down. And Fromm looked up and pointed at the clock. I'm not sure if he did, didn't think time it out. had been reset Georgia. properly, but a They're timeout first. called by Georgia. Seven nothing Georgia with the lead. With the lead, and Rocky as they break the huddle there. What did you hear Kirby telling the guys? Yeah, he was losing his mind down here. I believe I heard him say, "You got to get set. You got to get set." And, you know, the quarterback's trying to change the play, trying to read the defense, but none of that matters if the offensive line and wide receivers aren't getting set. He wanted everybody to the entire offense. Yeah, it was, it was a group yell. It was, it no one was singled out. It wasn't one guy. He wants to get everybody's face. And listen, he's getting ready. This is a big year. They feel real good about their players. But again, coaching them, any opportunity he has to push those buttons, he will. Third and two. Holyfield, nice cut in the backfield to make a man miss. And he's got the first down to the 10. Slipped right by Chris Melton. Look at this. Yeah, just, uh, you know, the movement. He's such a compact player. He's just hard to get initially. And he makes that first guy miss. That's the next level for running backs. And now we have an injured player down on the field. Pickup of nine on that run with his dad looking on. And unfortunately for the Blue Raiders, this is another defensive back down. They came in today without four guys. Daryl Randolph was hurt earlier, had to, or excuse me, lost a helmet. He had to step out for a bit. And now this is Greg Great, who had a 97-yard pick six earlier this year and is in there replacing the injured Reed Blankenship. I'm getting some attention right now from the athletic trainers. So the run to convert 
on third down, and uh, that's going to set up this Georgia squad nicely in the red zone, where the only time they haven't converted in the red zone was when they took a knee late in the South Carolina game this year. Yeah, and I think as you look at this game, you really see Kirby Smart getting involved with the players and things are going on. Very small things, the fumble, the, the missed protection backed up in the in their own zone, and then the, the clock running down, they have to waste the timeout. So these little small things when you're going against a team against Middle Tennessee, when you feel like you have advantages all over the field, you've got to come out and be clean. And I don't know if he sees that right now with his team. Greg Great is able to uh, walk off to the side. So they are forced to go much deeper down their depth chart than they had wanted. This is Kendricks Gladney, who will come on to replace Great. Over 100 yards on the ground. They're just outside the 10. Play action in the rollout. From to the back of the end zone. Touchdown. Jeremiah Holloman. An 11 yard strike. Touchdown, Georgia. And plays here in the first quarter for Georgia. Blank and chips PAT is good. A couple of possessions and a couple of scores, Anthony. Yeah, it's about putting players in a bind, Beth. And this little play action, the corner is now in a bind because you're going to get Ridley underneath and you're going to get Holloman up top. And he's the only defender in place because the strong safety bites on the run fake. So watch the corner pop out. Who's he going to get, Beth? Is he going to go underneath? Is he going to go up high? He's too late. He stays in the middle. And that's, that's the big decision. And for, for the defense, that was great replacement. Yeah, Gladney. Gladney coming into the game. So again, when you're not in, you don't get the reps, and then you come in in the red zone, you better be on point. Being out of place really hurt Middle Tennessee on that play. And what stood out down here was Georgia's offense gave Middle Tennessee a bit of their own medicine. They come to the line quick, snap the ball. MTSU's defense not ready, and I think that's what helped make that play break. Five plays, 49 yards in two minutes, and that all came after the fourth down stop by the Bulldog defense. Rodrigo Blankenship will boot that one deep. No return. Well, tonight at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC 4th, ranked Ohio State. And number 15, TCU, squaring off down in Arlington, Texas. Saturday Night Football presented by Wells Fargo. It'll be their first meeting in 45 years, and it's the new hotshot quarterback in Columbus, Dwayne Haskins, taking on that TCU defense. You know, I went back and watched the film of Haskins last week because I wanted to see that completion percentage was so high. The one difference I see in him early that I didn't see in Barnett is the accuracy in the deep ball. Man, he had a couple throws down the field, and he completed every single one of them the last two weeks. Just really, that could be the next level for Ohio State that they really haven't had in the past couple seasons with Barnett Barrett. And their biggest test um, during the three-game suspension of head coach Urban Meyer. Meyer will be back for their home game hosting Tulane next weekend. Down a couple of scores. Terrell West is now in a tailback alongside Brent Stockstill. And he'll get the carry. And he'll get the first down yardage. Pickup of eight for West. Think about this, Beth. The first series for Middle Tennessee, they came up short on a completed catch to get a first down. They had to punt. And then the fourth down stop after that. They'll run the quick hitter here to Brad Anderson. Yep, then they then they decide to do a deceptive play on third and one when they just got a big stop on offense on defense on the other side. So again, they talked about they have to play perfect in this game to have success against Georgia. You can't have those mistakes early on in the football game. Stock still. Back shoulder throw incomplete. He was looking for C.J. Windham, and that'll bring up third down for this Blue Raider offense that's under the direction of Tony Franklin, a name familiar around the Southeastern Conference, a former O.C. with uh, Kentucky and Auburn, and then Cal.
I like, five. I like this. I like taking their time. The speed of the tempo could potentially get them off the field faster. I like letting them see the field a little bit and getting themselves in the right play. Stock still hit as he throws, incomplete. And it's fourth down. Georgia brings a corner cat blitz off the edge and stock still has to be prepared to get that ball out to the receiver quickly he waits and then there's just too much speed from the safety position Beth to get in place so again gotta be on point with your opportunities against a defense like Georgia Keon Richardson was the guy bringing some pressure so Crumpton is not back to receive this punt they will go back to Miko Hardman he's gonna let it take a bounce too and it goes the Blue Raiders way so a couple of punts where Kirby Smart is apoplectic about his return guys not getting to the ball he is I mean listen he I think that he wants them to aggressively get after I know it was a bad punt but if the speed at the receiver position especially with Miko just go under there and get that football and attack it give up the 20 yards now because of that spin after you get a poor kick by their punter for and that's the word he kept using, aggressive. He must have said it about 15 times. <laughs> Go up, be aggressive, and catch that football. And so now they're set back to the six-yard line after the 52-yard punt, and they will go to the freshman quarterback here, Justin Fields. Not a Kennesaw, Georgia, the number one recruit in the country, who has uh, had some time in their first two games and the bull rush right up the middle elijah holyfield the six three freshman he's a big guy at 225. yeah i'll tell you you know strong arm i mean he looks the part his lower body me and rocky were on the sidelines before the game we were shocked at the size and strength of this kid and he understands the protections they got a lot of them but he's still growing in that department uh, for, for Georgia's offense. And the roll out, he's got his tight end. Isaac not a first down out across the 30-yard line. The 10th pass attempt of the season for Justin at a gain of 20. You know, Beth, when you have a running game like Georgia, the, the position that really gets to take advantage of that is the play actions, the tight ends, because the misdirection coming over the top underneath, those guys can be key role players. And Isaac Nata was a very highly recruited tight end coming out of IMG Academy in Bradenton, and he's got a great opportunity to catch some more balls this season. Yeah, the number one uh, tight end recruit in his class, originally out of Buford, Georgia. It here is to Holyfield, upended at the 35. It's a good job by Hudson there, the corner position. And watch him just, you got to take him low, man. You got to find ways to get these backs down. I mean, Holyfield almost jumped over that uh, himself. Uh, he's got six carries uh, for, for 87 yards right now, so he's having a spectacular start to this football game. And a 66-yard run to help set up the first touchdown for Georgia. And they've scored both times they've had it. Fields on second down against a three-man rush. Thought about the run. Now will air it out. Going downfield. It pops up and falls incomplete. Terry Godwin had a crack at it. Coverage by Daryl Randall. Well, you know, it's about seeing the field, right? Being clear at the quarterback position. And initially his eyes were at the middle of the field. The tight end was there. He came off of it, scrambled a bit. And then he tries to get one down the field with the receiver. Godwin had the DB beat, but it was a little underthrown. Again, when you come off the sidelines, you got to get that ball out of your hands and throw it out there a little quick. Just that timing thing coming off the bench, but he's in this game early. And it was an ineligible receiver penalty downfield because his teammates thought right there he was going to run with it. And then he said, whoop, no, let me see if I can chuck this. Terrific effort by Gladney at the tail end of that. Almost got the pick. And now it's third and six. Fields will step up. Going to try and get it himself. And he will 
fall forward across the line to move the chains. This, of course, is a the dual threat activity you're going to get from him. You know, he, he can beat you with his legs. But Cade Mace has a little trouble with this underneath technique by the by the linebacker, Harris, and he's able to make th some things happen. I mean, he's just a big guy. He's hard to bring down, lower body. He's, he's a special player. That ends the first quarter, and a solid start for Georgia. A couple of touchdowns and the 14-0 lead over the Blue Redders of Middle Tennessee. Georgia with the lead over Middle Tennessee, and uh, well, the body painters are out, Rocky, for this noon kick. Yeah, I talked to the leader of that group, uh, Slater. That's his name. He's all painted up. He wants to give me a big hug. I'm saying, wait a minute, man. Watch all the paint on the new shirt here. But he told me it's the 21st year for that organization. They have 13 bodies painted for people that actually do the painting. He said they beat to the beginning of the year. They get here four or five hours before the game and kind of organize what they plan to do. Could have put a little face paint on Rocky for us or something. <laughs> Tyler Simmons down the sideline. Touchdown, Georgia. Fifty six yards on the run. You know, Tyler Simmons has been earning the right to play at the receiver position because his ability to block and be a physical receiver. Kirby Kirby has responded by giving an opportunity to play. Now, does he stay in bounds here? I'll tell you what, that, that's pretty good by him. Big receiver, six foot, 200 pounds. It's a heck of a job by him taking advantage of his opportunities. What a start to the second quarter for Georgia. 56 yards for Simmons on a run. Big run. Young players taking their chance, giving the opportunities, making big plays, and the crowd loves it. The college football playoff lives on ESPN. building towards the college football playoff and so far it's been all ball control for Georgia look at the difference in the time of possession and the yards yeah that's about a minute and 30 seconds a series Beth and again we've seen the opportunities that Middle Tennessee hasn't been able to take advantage of to extend drives and if you give the ball back to Georgia that offense is going to make you pay and they've done it through the air and running as well Three touches and three scores for the Bulldogs. Just underway here in the second quarter. And a game that was moved up from later tonight to the noon kick for Hurricane Florence. And we got a penalty flag down. Looked like the Bulldogs may have gotten a running start. The special teams meetings early in the week are not going to be fun ones for Georgia. Yeah, they're getting ready for the bulk of their schedule. Offside on the kicking team, number two. Five-yard penalty will be added to the end of the kick. First down. Let's check into the studio now and Chris Cotter. Okay, Beth and Anthony, let's check in with some what's happening with Oklahoma. Over on ABC, Kyler Murray. Man, he and Marquise Brown have a thing going, don't they? 75 yards for the score, 10 to nothing right now. Sooners on top. Meanwhile, Penn State trades McSorley. Already has a touchdown pass in this one. He's going to keep this himself on the run pass option. He had nine games last year with a touchdown pass and a touchdown run. He's got another one this year. Thank you, Chris. Some good starts around the, the country for some quarterbacks. You, you, Kyler Murray and uh, Trace McSorley. How about Dwayne Hoskins? The numbers he's putting up so far for Ohio State. Tua looking awfully strong for Alabama. They got that big road game at Ole Miss coming up later tonight. The pass to Brad Anderson, and it's a first down for Middle. Brad Anderson with the rest. And this is what Middle Tennessee needs to do. It's very simple. I mean, they've averaged about five or six yards, Beth, on first down every series so far. So they're getting the plays they want, and in those situations in second and third down, they have to continue to execute. 
West gets the call. Out to midfield. As Brent Stockstill settles down with this offense. So experienced, of course, a young man who's been around the game his whole life. His dad and his grandfather both played and coached. Out on the edge in a good open field stop. Right there for William Poole. Third down and one. Well, here we go. Another short third down. We saw a misdirection play that cost them eight yards. Can they come up with a downhill play? They got a defensive line in there. Lineman at the fullback position. See if they go downhill instead of sideways. They'll direct snap it to West, and he's got the first down as he gets around the corner. That one much better execution on the third down play for the Blue Raiders, and they got it. And now we got heavy substitution in, and you see Middle Tennessee trying to speed it up, see if we can get these guys out of position. This was a big deal when we talked to Mel Tucker yesterday, keeping fresh legs in the game against this tempo. West gashing him a bit right now, down inside the 40 in a gain of eight. Of course, they are without Tavares Thomas today, probably their best runner, still out with an injury. So West and Mobley getting the call. Anderson, they want to get him as many touches as possible, and he lost the ball. Coughs it up, recovered by LeCount, and George has got the turnover. That was J.R. Reed who knocked it loose. And the second giveaway for the Blue Raiders. And these are the small things you've got to be cognizant of. And you see Reed do a nice job. Baker's in there. Reed punching it out. The guy's got a seven-foot wingspan, Beth. There's a reason why he can get his hands in there. And then Johnny on the spot, one of the more active safeties in college football. LeCount does a nice job, and that's another turnover uh, for this Georgia defense. He's got the savage pads on down here right now. I think they're on backwards, but still look good. <laughs> <laughs> it's back to Fromm at quarterback. And a 21-0 lead. The toss to Herrion. Rocky, you had those Savage pa uh, pads on yesterday. Didn't you give them a little test drive? Well, let's just say we may see a little footage of that oh. later. But uh, it was an honor to get those pads on. It was bringing back some days. Maybe I had a little eligibility left, but uh, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Could you crack the starting lineup is the question. Right? I, I'd crack something, Beth, and probably my hip. So, no. <laughs> eligibility. Did you take six years to graduate in, uh, in Notre Dame, or was it? Uh... <laughs> that doesn't hold back some kids. You know, uh, find, find one somewhere. I thought he was always bigger <laughs> that is what in the biz we call a tease folks Rocky's gonna give us a an inside look at the Georgia locker room the brand new West End renovations that have gone on here at Sanford Stadium it is a beautiful spot of course as if the recruiting could get any better over the last couple of years uh, a top-rated recruiting class. I think this year's current crop for next season is number three. That would be a pair of third-ranked recruiting classes in the last few years. Kirby Smart has really changed things. And the talent they're bringing in, there's Terry Godwin with the catch. They're going to rule that one incomplete. Good to see Terry Godwin back in the lineup. Probably their most skilled route-running receiver. Came back last week after missing the first in the opener. And uh, again, a lot of weapons at Fromm's disposal. Be a distributor, get the ball out of your hands, read the defense. It could be very dangerous for Georgia versus a lot of teams this year. Holyfield muscling his way for another first down into Blue Raider territory and a gain of 11 and Elijah. Sniffing a 100-yard game today, now at 97, so a new career high for Holyfield as we kick off a day that uh, ultimately will lead us down to the Grove in Alabama Ole Miss coming up tonight on ESPN. From plenty of time, and Holyfield was turning to 
to see some green grass before he caught it. Guys, I'll tell you one thing I'm noticing down here on the field. The left tackle, Cade Mays, the freshman. We talked about him earlier. He gave up the sack. He is a, right now, he's a waist bender. He needs to be more of a knee bender. He needs to get that six foot, six frame down a little bit. I see him kind of up on his tiptoes, and he's especially these smaller defensive linemen are getting underneath his pads. Well, all he knows coming out of high school is out muscling kids. He was probably the biggest guy on the field when he played. When you're playing the next level competition, Rocky's right. You got to learn to sit back and punch and take on guys with your weight balanced throughout your stance. Flying down as Hartman tries to reach for the 40. Mays, the freshman, getting the start today. This is what he wants to do. He's a, he's a specialist getting on the guys. An undersized defensive lineman, and he can really attack, get his hands in. It's a good finish by that young man. He's going to be good, man. They love what he brings to the table. He's just got to work some of the details of his technique. Illegal block in the back, number two on the, on the offense. Penalty is 10 yards from the previous spot. Replay, second down. And I think Mays is fine when he's coming out of his stance, comes out real low. It's just when he's in that pass protection two-point stance, he has a tendency to play high right now. Well, you got Mays, the freshman, on the left side. Isaiah Wilson, the redshirt freshman, on the right side. They also brought in Trey Hill and Jamari Salyer, this freshman class stacked with highly recruited and highly ranked O-lineman. James Cook, another rookie now back in the backfield. From underneath out to the 49. How about the size of the biggins? Yeah, they're averaging about 330. I'll say this, Beth. These three guys on the inside, they're about as good as any three offensive linemen in college football. They will be a handful week in and week out. Tremendous finish between three of the three, the inside three players, and they are pancake specialists. Looking for a couple syrup shots, Rocky, uh, after this game for those guys. <laughs> On third and 16. From trying to make something out of nothing, and down he goes. All the way back at the 43-yard line, Jordan Ferguson and Wesley Bush picking up the sack, their second. Well, all three receivers are going out on deep routes, and the Fromm doesn't have an underneath guy because Holyfield right in front of him has to pass protect. Good job in the pocket. Now the receivers have to come back to the ball. You see number nine, Holl Holloman, come back, but they have to do it sooner. And again, no outlet for Fromm because of the blitz pickup by Holyfield. First punt for Camarda. Second, excuse me. Ty Lee back deep. He'll let that go over his head. And bound into the end zone. 55 yards on the punt. When we come back, that much ballyhoo tease from a moment ago. Rocky's corner in the Georgia locker room. Well, it used to be about tradition and history, but now it's all about the facilities, Jack. Georgia just built an amazing new locker room. Let's go take a look. 5,400 square feet, state-of-the-art, broken down by position. I wish I still had some eligibility left. Let's go check out the linebackers. Roquan Smith doesn't have a locker, but I think he helped build this place. Look at this, the name is up in lights, a place to hang the shoulder pads, USB ports, the sport coat goes right in there to be young again. I'm stretched, I'm warm, I'm inspired. Tell Kirby I'm ready to go. Hey guys, I don't know if you can hear me down here, but I'm with the Spike Squad. They are fired up. Tell us a little bit about your group here. Man, this is Spike Squad. We're getting loud and proud. We're happy to be here. We got Mason here holding it down too right here. And we're just happy to be here. Hopefully we'll be in Middle Tennessee State again. Very cool, man. Very loud down here. Very ferocious crew. Let's get it on. Let's go. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> looks like he does have a little eligibility down there. Getting them fired up here at Sanford Stadium. The, the, the picture we didn't show was after he was warming up on that bike to get loose. He actually had to hit the cold <laughs> tub real quick. 
Oh, yeah, yeah nice definitely. Step. <laughs> that was oxygen. awesome. <laughs> those, those are some great facilities. And you're right, Rocky. That, that's what it's about. These recruits come through. They want to see the glitz and the glamour of the facilities. And Georgia definitely has that. We're going to have a timeout coming up here on third and ten. It's right, uh, right behind the goal post. And through those doors, the West End. Here at Sanford, Middle Tennessee wants to talk about it with the third down coming up. Rocky rolling and taking us to break. I like package of Baker right to the NFL. On third and one, they try a misdirection play. Guess who's Johnny on the spot? Staying home, Baker. Then he reads the play on the outside, gets an interception down the sidelines, and then the, one of the biggest turnovers in the game, he pokes out the football, and Georgia gets it. I'll tell you now, it's not about making plays. It's about when you do it, and he's a situational player that gets it done, and he threw those shoulder pads on because he is a savage on the football field. No, Kuyper and Todd McShay think real highly of them and the possibility that DeAndre could be a top 10 pick heading to the NFL next year. You know, he leads by example. He's a quiet player. He was not a five-star recruit crew when he came to Georgia. Just very underrated, built himself up, and he came back, Beth, for his senior year to, you know, he had a chip on his shoulder. You know, they, they were a play away from, from winning a possible national championship last year, and they fell short, and he wanted to rectify that this season. First, they had Roquan Smith taken by Chicago in the top 10 last year. Roquan had a pretty good debut with the Bears, and it's Miko Hartman. The cutback at the 30. Hartman taking it the distance. Touchdown, Georgia. Beth, there's a reason why he's the most explosive, fastest player on the field. And they put him on special teams for a reason. It's a big-time play by him. He's on the Paul Horning watch list as one of the most versatile players in the country. He's been dynamic as a receiver through the first two games, and now the 70-yard punt return for the 27-0 lead. Blankenship, good. Kirby Smart didn't want to see his punt returners letting the ball hit the ground. Be aggressive. Miko Cole took plans into action here. And when you're one-on-one -on -one with the punter, lights out, baby. Touchdown, Georgia. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. And they have been watching a lot of Georgia scoring here at Sanford Stadium through their uh, two home games, outscoring opponents 73 zip. They beat Austin P in the opener 45 0. And a couple of scores of over 50 yards here in the first half, including the Hardman 70 yard punt return TD. It's all about explosive plays, Beth, and they lived off those last year. They average of one explosive play every six and a half snaps. And today, they're ripping them off at, at a big-time level. No chance for the Blue Raiders on this one. So we'll take a moment to remind you about the ESPN app. Now with ESPN Plus, get more ESPN and download now. Stay up to date on everything that's going on around college football and all the other sports you have come to love over the years. Got uh, a little upset brewing right now. Troy leading Nebraska, according wow. to my ESPN app. 17 zip. Really? That's in, that's in, uh, that's got to be in Lincoln. Wow. Tennessee winning, Kentucky winning right now. Georgia will jump uh, in with both feet into the rest of the SEC schedule next week. They'll be on the road at Missouri. 
Another five yards on first down. If I had to nitpick Beth on the defense today, I know they paid two turnovers. First down, I'd say Middle Tennessee's averaging about five to six yards every single possession on first down. They'll pick up a first down there to Patrick Smith. You know, those poignant, big situational plays that Georgia's made today, those are key. You need those kind of plays when you're talking about playing teams like Middle Tennessee, but some of the bigger schools on their schedule. But in the trenches, stopping the run, not giving up easy yards, it's got to get better for Georgia on early downs. I'll run it again with Terrell West. Stock still in this first half is 10 of 14, 67 yards through the air. He does have the one pick. Playing for his father, Rick, who was telling us the other day on the phone just how much he loves to watch his son compete and to lead this team. And he says, if your quarterback's not tough, then your team's not tough. Well, there's no questioning that with Brent Stockstill out of the gun right here. Miscommunication with the receiver there, C.J. Windham. It's tight coverage, Beth. It's tough to get separation. They don't have very, you know, Coach was talking about their fastest receiver. Tavon Salter is out of this game, so they don't have that breakaway guy, but that may not matter against the speed and quickness that they have at the DB position for Georgia. They've only converted one of their five third down attempts here in the first half. They're going to run for it, and they'll get it. First down with Brad Anderson. They are trying for all kinds of creative ways to get him the football. Out of the backfield as a receiver, he's played both positions for them. And again, getting through the second level, you know, linebackers are abundant on this Georgia team. A lot of new faces, obviously, with the departure of Roquan Smith. Timeout, Georgia. They're second. Yeah, they also had Lorenzo Carter and Davin Bellamy, that whole unit yep. turning over. And, you know, you see 44 there, and he's, he's rallying the troops up on defense. I think he's talking about too many yards in the running game. I mean, he wants physicality. You know, they have Monty Rice, 32, Rocky. There's a lot of new linebackers, and, again, faster guys that need to plug up those holes to make plays. There's no question about it. We've talked earlier about how it's a speed game. You need guys that can cover in space, but especially when SEC play hits, you need to have those linebackers and those interior defensive linemen plugging up those holes. So I think if you're Kirby Smart and you're looking down the road, that's got to be a little bit of a concern right now. What would you guys think of Roquan's debut? He comes in to face Green Bay, and his first play, he gets a sack of Deshaun Kaiser. It's a pretty nice combination, Beth. Khalil Mack coming off the edge and Roquan <laughs> Smith coming up the middle. I mean, I don't know who's going to block or stop that this year, but that could be a special combination. Oh, and, and Kirby's not going to be happy about this late player running into the field. That was Julian Rochester who came scrambling on, and that out of a timeout, no less. A gain of five here. It's about the operation, Beth, right? It's about keeping it clean. Uh, you know, you're trying to rotate players uh, to get them healthy, but you're right, out of a timeout just doesn't make too much sense here for Georgia. Middle Tennessee, when they have run it, nearly five yards per carry. But they just have not been able to sustain a drive so far in this first half. They're working on one right here. Yeah, and that's problematic. It's going to bring up third down and about five more. And right now I can look at Kirby on the sideline a few feet from me. He's really upset at the operation of changing guys in and out. Some guys seem to kind of want to come in, then they don't go in. It's like sense of urgency. If you're going in, running the game. If you're not, stay on the sideline. I think there's just confusion about who's coming out and who's coming in. They got Taylor, Cox, and Rice out there right now at linebacker. They'll throw it out on the edge. This is Smith. Gets a nice block, and away he goes. Touchdown, Blue Raiders, 41 yards. Uh, big blocks by Gatlin K. 
Casey and C.J. Wyndham. Got to be able to pull something out of the tape, right, Beth? Have success for Middle Tennessee. They can get better. It's a heck of a job. We talked about the physicality and the receivers blocking for Georgia. Look at these blocks on the outside. Two Georgia guys blocked up right here. Gives a wide open lane, and there's nobody home. Untouched for Smith up the sidelines. And again, uh, this is the type of plays they run on offense. Georgia's prepared for them, but still Middle Tennessee is able to make a play. Extra point is good in this season for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities. Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. Eight plays, 75 yards in under three minutes. And it's the 41-yard pass, Stockstill to Patrick Smith for the touchdown. Stockstill talked about that. He really likes this team this year within their conference. They feel like they have a really good chance. They've had a lot of success at Middle Tennessee, and they feel like with the leadership of his son, Brent, at the quarterback position, the receivers and the depth that they have, they could just get healthy at running back. They may be able to get better, although they are having a good day today running the football against one of the best defenses in the country. And he said he knew coming in, and we know what hill it is we have to climb here, but one thing... Above all, he learned from Coach Bobby Bowden was to never back down. And they, they have had success against Power Fives before. Uh, certainly no one as highly ranked as Georgia. In fact, they are still looking for their first win over a ranked opponent. But they, they got a win against Missouri a couple of years ago, Syracuse last year. They beat Georgia Tech five or six years ago. You would think playing teams like Vanderbilt and Georgia will get mm -hmm. you really started and jump started for their conference play for sure. They still have Kentucky remaining on the schedule. They'll face three SEC teams this year. Well, now let's take a look at this week's college football rankings brought to you by Allstate, number one Alabama, playing at Ole Miss tonight, Clemson and Oklahoma, the other top 10 teams uh, with leads right now. Oklahoma, that, that's getting tighter, 17-0, and Clemson pouring it on under a, a minute opponent today. But it's going to start up quick, Beth, for all these teams. See Auburn, LSU for sure. But next week, conference play starts. A lot of these teams are going to find out what they're made of. 192 yards rushing for Georgia so far in the first half. That's over 11 yards 18 per on carry. The offense. Five yard penalty. First down. Not a flag for the infraction. So little things, right? We're seeing a little jump offside, the muffin not coming up and catching punts. A lot of things Kirby's going to be able to coach this team up after this football game, and he's having a nice conversation with Nada, not as a, a veteran of this team, a junior, playing a uh, true freshman all the way through. So a lot of experience at that position. From off the punt fake, he's going to go deep down the middle, and it is held in by Holloman. Down inside the 15-yard line. Into the red zone for Georgia on a 65-yard pass play. Really the best thing I love about when Fromm's playing quarterback is you're up no matter who you are. Could be Holloman, could be Simmons, could be a tight end. If you're running around, you're open. He's going to see the field and make a connection. Going to go under center here with James Cook behind him. Freshman will get the ball. Stuffed. Right at the 15-yard line. It's another big play for Georgia on this one. Pretty ball sells it to the left heavy, and he comes all the way back to the backside post. The safety's not home. He could have led him in the front, but he ran right under that ball. Good concentration by Holloman, catching the ball with his hands in stride. Holloman getting some opportunities along with Simmons, number 87, guys you normally wouldn't see catching the football. Explosive plays are not the problem with this team. It's just the little things, offsides, too many guys on the field, defense looking around a little bit, just the self and Inflicted things are what Kirby needs to clean up. They got it second and ten right here. A couple of tight ends in there. They'll go to their physical back, Holyfield, for a few yards. It's uh, six penalties, by the way, in this first half for Georgia. And that doesn't count a few of the special teams miscues from earlier that uh, Hardman tried to wash away with that 70 yard punt return for a score. Blue Raiders a little uncertain defensively. Yeah. 
Fromm on third down to the end zone, and Ridley, did he get the feet down? Touchdown, Georgia! Question is, is his foot down? There's the catch. Right foot touches ground. That's a completion. That is one heck of a throw by Jake Fromm. Perfect position. Defenders late. Right foot hits the grass, then the left foot. Third touchdown pass for Jake. He's 9 of 11 on the day. And that was a third down pass as well, Beth. Coach Cheney talked about can he be better on third down last week against South Carolina. Didn't have it on third down. Today, he's been on the money. And for giving up the touchdown, Georgia responds 35 to 7. Three TDs, 124 yards for Jake. And one of the games that was affected by Hurricane Florence. That Ohio at Virginia game, they moved that to Vanderbilt Stadium, and then uh, Georgia and Clemson kickoffs were moved up. Virginia Tech postponed. West Virginia, NC State canceled, and Carolinas both north and south also canceled. This was just announced as a switch, what, about 24, 48 hours ago, and here they are uh, turning out in mass to support the Bulldogs on short notice. Yeah, it's definitely a beautiful crowd. It's a beautiful day today. Very fortunate to have weather conditions nice here in Athens. And, you know, it was tough for Middle Tennessee. You know, they flew in. They stayed in Atlanta thinking for the night game. They had to get up this morning at 6 a.m. and trek over. So it does affect some of the players in, from a scheduling standpoint when you're the away team. But the fans definitely got the memo and showed up today. Played for the national championship against Alabama last year. And, of course, the, the new college football playoff predictor has Georgia right now as one of the four teams that would make it this year. And it's been the explosive plays that uh, have been getting the headlines so far today. Yeah, you know, what is an explosive play? Runs over 12, passes over 16. Holyfield started it off on the first series today with a big uh, run down the sidelines. And then Simmons, the wide receiver, gets a little jet sweep and takes it to the house. I mean, great job on the sidelines working it. And then Nico catch the ball. He can play special teams. And when he gets out in front, he can really run. And then, of course, down the field, the accuracy of the ball today, passing the football. Fromm's done a nice job. Great balance by the Georgia offense, getting plays and making it work today. Three scores of over 40 yards, and then the big 66-yard run from Holyfield, and the 67-yard pass from Fromm. Final two minutes now this first half. Rollout stock still, and he'll just bloop that one out of bounds. Uh, you heard DeAndre Walker coming behind him as well as Jonathan Ledbetter. And that's always a tough play for a left-handed quarterback rolling out to the short side of the field. There's really just about the from the bottom of numbers to the sideline. He has an opportunity to complete that ball. That's and it, it shrinks down the field from a route standpoint. It's really just a two-man route. Those receivers on the left side. They're out of the equation. Third down and nine. West will run it. And it's going to bring up fourth down. Tyler Clark was able to take him down. Georgia will call its final timeout to stop the clock with 128 to go. On a, a day so far where Georgia has been able to take advantage of both its size and its speed, Anthony. Those big plays so huge, and, and it, it was interesting to see right after they were in trouble with special teams for some miscues, 
They heard what coach was preaching to them, and Miko Harbin comes up with the big Well, return. they respond. They got yeah. a lot of weapons on this team. I mean, they run the ball. They throw the ball effectively. They have great balance. Uh, they have great leadership at the quarterback position with Fromm. He delegates the operation perfectly. And the defense, again, they have some, some new guys playing in new positions as far as linebackers, but their secondary is as strong as any secondary with Baker, who came back for his senior year, Reed in the back end, and Le uh, LeCount, the strong safety. This team is loaded, and they're going to make another run this year, not only for the SEC, but to try to become the best team in the nation. Yeah, Baker with an interception and a strip that LeCount was able to recover, and can Hardman do it again? Out across the 40-yard line with 117 to go on the half. Well, tonight at 8 Eastern on ABC, number four, Ohio State, number 15, TCU. It's Saturday Night Football presented by Wells Fargo, also live on the ESPN app. That will come your way from Arlington, Texas tonight. Be a big test uh, for the Buckeyes. And Whoa, yeah, we got a little scuffle here. And a cup. That's right before the punt. It's interesting, Beth. You know, uh, you see some coaches running out in the field. You don't want to see those things happen. Emotions do fly. Things happen. Guys getting out of position. Maybe there was probably a communication error on that third down play. And who said what? You need to give me this. And all tempers will back down. They'll get on the sidelines and work it out. But it's a competitive defense, and they're, and they're trying to make plays across the board. And guys want to be in the right spots. They don't want to get time the out. wrong information. Middle Tennessee. And the senior Walker the and, and the freshman Brenton the Cox. Well, a timeout here with 102 to go. Well, it's the extra yard for Teachers Week, a week-long celebration of teachers led by the College Football Playoff Foundation through its Extra Yard for Teachers platform. You can visit the foundation website, cfp-foundation.org, to learn more about Extra Yard for Teachers Week and see how you can get involved. And uh, Richard LeCount had a shout-out for one of his teachers. I'd like to give a personal shout-out to my computer teacher and my high school football coach at Liberty County High School, Kurt Warner. He also played tight end here at the University of Georgia. Go dogs! Thank you very much, Richard. I think we're going to hear a little bit more from him in the second half, right? You, we got a yeah, he's really Becton intelligent. Boyman got together with him. We had some fun, a little bit personality driven, but uh, very smart kid, and he's a big, big time player for this defense. Out of Riceboro, Georgia, and Justin Fields on at quarterback got his helmet knocked off. He did. Uh, Khalil Brooks, yeah. their stud linebacker, and he was brought into this. Now it's a quick turnaround and. Kirby trying to get a two-minute offense here working to get some uh, some work done. But with the helmet knocked off, he's got to come out for a play. So Fromm is back in there at quarterback. The previous play is under further review. Oh. Early on the field was a first down to Georgia. And uh, this may be uh, a look at whether or not this was targeting from Khalil Brooks. Yeah, so Fields is a runner, number one. So now it becomes, did you use your helmet in the in the area of force? And right there, the back of the head. Not only did he hit him in the back of the head, Beth, the helmet comes off. It's going to be hard for refay officials not to say that's targeting. Yeah. And, you know, that'll be a big loss, obviously, for Middle Tennessee Brooks. But not just this game, but... Well, he'd be out just there, since it's just at the end of the first half here, he'd miss the rest of this game. Yep. And I don't think he tried to be intentional with that, but regardless, intent is never a part of the call. It looked like helmet to helmet, and yep. he'll be done probably. He gave the oohs and ahs by the crowd. They're showing it on the big screen. And anytime you see the helmet fly off, that's it's not a good look. Brooks is watching it as well on the big screen, and he's putting his hands up, saying, "I don't, I don't see anything." But clearly, his helmet hits. So that changes things too now for Justin Fields, since it, if it is a penalty that forced and uh, caused the helmet to be knocked off, he could go back in without missing a play. 
After further review, there was a targeting foul on the play. Number six on the defense. That penalty is 15 yards from the end of the run. Number six is disqualified. Number one does not have to leave the game. So Kyle Brooks is out for the remainder of the day, the targeting penalty. And Fields gets to, gets to stay in yep. the game, so he gets a little more of this two-minute work uh, with 53 seconds left uh, in the half. And there is the freshman from Kennesaw back in. First and ten for the dog following the penalty. And for the penalty, too, they're all the way down to the 32-yard line, and Brian Harrion is the offset back. Fields to Nauta down to the 20. First down, Georgia. Picked up 12 there. Quickly to the line, Georgia without a timeout left. To the outside, Hardman to stop the clock. 30 seconds to go for the dogs. Yeah, so far, smooth operation for Fields. Being this, uh, you don't get too many of these scenarios, Beth, when you're talking about some the first three games of the season, getting him in there. He's playing a lot earlier today. Coach said he didn't really like the amount of reps he got last week against South Carolina, so thought he could play more. He's getting a chance now to do that. Four receivers here for Georgia, including Demetrius Robertson with Crumpton to the left. Fields looking that way and now looking for a lane. He's got one. Cuts back at the five. Touchdown. Justin Fields. And his first rushing score is a Bulldog. Six three, two hundred twenty-five pounds, Beth. I thought he was going to lower his shoulder, try to run him over, but he used his niffiness on that one to get in the end zone. Well done, well dri driven plays by Fields. Fifteen yards on the run for Justin. There you go, fifty-nine yards in just five plays and fifty-four seconds. Hey, you know, no one's open. He's smart with the football; doesn't try to force it. And then can you make somebody miss for 31? Justin Brown, the corner comes up, and he just gives him a juke. You'll see it here. Again, great protection. Just nothing there. He can make plays with his legs. And you got to break down and make a tackle. Justin Fields, it's a, it's a well-run operation there, and that, that'll be good work for the young quarterback uh, for this season. Yeah, good look there, too, at, at uh, Justin Brown. You're, you're not going to arm tackle Justin no. Fields. No and, uh, Brown, one of the first to applaud the youngster. He's so big, man. I'll tell you, we, we were warming up, and we were down the field, and I'm telling you, he's, he's just a big... You know, I, I, the first thing me and Rocker think, came to our mind was Cam Newton. Now, Cam Newton, obviously, is 6'5". He's only 6'3". And he's going to put some more weight on, but his lower body is so strong, so big, tough for tacklers to really wrap him up. And you saw it there. You're not going to arm tackle him like you said, Beth. That's 23 time. seconds remaining in the half for Middle Tennessee. Perhaps a knee coming up as Fields gets on the phone to talk to Jim Chaney. Three rushes, 31 yards, and his first career rushing touchdown. For the freshman out of Kennesaw, Georgia, and the Harrison Hoyas. He was ranked number one overall, top recruit in the class, originally committed to Penn State and then changed his mind. And you guys referenced Cam Newton while well, he played for his seven on seven All Star team over the summer. And the Blue Raiders don't know knees, they'll run it instead. And to me, the thing that sticks out about his size, as Anthony West mentioned, the, the, the big lower body. I think you have to have that as a quarterback if you're trying to you know, shake off a tackler as he's coming to sack you. If you're trying to run in the open field, some of these quarterbacks that are tall but skinny, those seem to be the ones that get hurt. A guy with his size, less of a chance. Halftime here in Athens, 42 to seven. 
Georgia with the lead over Middle Tennessee and will be back for college football halftime report from the studio after this short break. Southbound with some new Carrie Underwood for you. As we welcome you back to Athens and the SEC on ESPN. Big first half for the Bulldogs on the ground. Rushing for over 200 yards. Jake Fromm, three touchdown passes in that first half. Special team solid as well. McCall Hardman with the big 70-yard punt return for a score. Beth Mowens along with Anthony, Speck, uh, Anthony Beck. They had some issues with game management and the penalties, but other than that, the dog's looking very much number three in the land. Work on good teams yeah. always have something for the half, but it's really about unsung heroes, right? I got, we all know the stars, the Hartmans and the Swifts and these guys that make these plays, but why do these plays happen, right? Why do they come down? Well, let, let's look at it. We're, we're going to break down. How about uh, Kindley here, the left guard? Watch, get the double team and then work up. Help his buddy out and get on the linebacker. Look at the gaping hole. Again, somebody doing a little extra. 66 Kinley. Now, misdirection. Because you're selling it hard, hats are down to the offensive line. Look at all the blue helmets running the other way. And now you put defenders in an awkward situation with Holloman being wide open in the back. And then again, the offensive line. We know they can get down and dirty, but can they pass protect? Everybody's in unison. Everybody's in sync. And from with the accuracy to the outside. So, Beth, again, it's not just one guy. It's yeah. the team, and I think that's what you want to see out of Kirby Smart and some of the players every single game. How about six different guys scoring today in this first half? Fromm looking really good, including the improvement on third down that the coaches were looking for. Fields with his first career rushing touchdown to the freshman. And Holyfield 100 yards on the ground. That's a new career high for him. This offensive line, fantastic getting the dogs 382 yards of total offense in that first half of play. And it's a 42 to seven lead. Middle Tennessee will receive to open up this second half. Let's check in with Rocky. Yeah, checked in with uh, Kirby Smart at halftime. One thing he was upset about was the sloppiness of the first half, especially with the changing out of the defenses with how fast the Middle Tennessee goes there. they got to be able to get guys on and off the field. He said so it's from the coaches to the players. they got to clean this up here in the second half. And, Rocky, watch yourself down there because there is another special teams penalty called. They're going to just decline it. And Middle Tennessee will take it out at the 30-yard line. Well, they had the Bulldogs for offsides again. Underway now in this third quarter. And the Blue Raiders, they, they've been all right, Anthony, running the football on first down today. They have, and that's something I'll keep my eye on. Again, you know, it's 42-7. We get it. You know, that, that's one thing. But Kirby Smart's coaching his football team. And throughout this game on first down, I've seen an average between five and seven yards. That, that's not good if you're playing teams like Bama or playing teams like Texas A&M. So that'll be what we'll watch here in the second half. And Terrell West with the, the first down run. Jay Hayes, the grad transfer from Notre Dame with the tackle. Yeah, for Georgia, you're looking down the road at Missouri and then back home to Tennessee and Vanderbilt, their next three games in the SEC before that uh, highly anticipated road trip down to Death Valley in a matchup with LSU. Of course, the Tigers taking on Auburn tonight on the road. Richard LeCount with the tackle of West. And, you know, their next opponent, Missouri, they're going to find some things that Middle Tennessee has had success on and build it into their new reconstructed offense. Me and Rocky, while you were calling a big NFL game, we were in Missouri last week, so we got to see them firsthand, and we'll get into them later in this game. Yeah, we'll have a little breakdown to preview that Georgia-Missouri matchup coming up. Patrick Smith made the play there it's going to bring up third down and running to the perimeter is clearly not an issue with this georgia team you see the speed but yes continues to be just those things up the middle that need to solidify and that's that linebacker rocky position for this team 
A little thinner, a little more fast, but sideline to sideline, and they're going to be flying around making those plays at their knee when that talented running back and really the outside system works well, they'll be in place. On third down, they'll go back to Smith, and he's going to come up a yard short, tackled at midfield. Christopher Smith is the guy that made the tackle. Fourth and one. They're going to keep the offense on the field here. And Stockstill doesn't have a play. You see his hands are out. He's, he's waiting for this. Got plenty of time on the play clock. Want to get it right. Again, fourth and one. You don't want to just go out there with indecisiveness. They're set. They'll run for it with Anderson, and they'll get it. First down, Blue Raiders. And what happens too, Beth, on success in run, running plays against Middle Tennessee, they spread you out so much. And they put you, some of your bodies get out of the actual box of the play. You see number 30 uh, for, for Georgia right here on the outside. He's got to get out of the box. So now you have five players inside the box for Georgia. That, that's a favorable run look for Middle Tennessee. Stock still incomplete. Lunging for that one was Gatlin Casey. But to your point, Anthony, next week they're going to face Missouri. Missouri is going to do the same thing. They're going to spread that field out, except Missouri's offensive line averages about 320. So you got to be able to win some of those one on one matchups inside here. And I think the run game as well is something they'll be able to see in this game and say maybe we can get more balance, especially with that Derek Dooley system in Missouri that they're running. They got six offensive linemen in the game here, and they'll be stuffed after a gain of one. As they unstack, Devontae Wyatt was down at the bottom, sophomore out of Decatur, Georgia. So we're getting a look at uh, some more of the Georgia depth West had the helmet come off, so he's off to the side for a play. Now stick Brad Anderson back. The tailback. Stock still looking for the slant, and his receiver Jimmy Marshall ran literally ran into <laughs> double coverage. They yeah, did, and his flare receiver out of the backfield. Watch this. He's going to try to come underneath. Well, guess what? Number two was coming downhill because that's that flat route by the running back was there. That was actually the open play. Stock still didn't get that read, and it's a wasted down for them. Fourth down, and they'll have to boot it away. Crumpton is back at the 10. They already have a punt return for a touchdown, 70 yards from Nicole Hardman. And Crumpton with the fair catch at the 10-yard line, a 35-yard punt, the Georgia offense, and Justin Fields coming out. A couple of quarterbacks see in action tonight. Jake Brown, terrific in that first half, 10 for 12 with the three touchdowns. Justin Fields with a rushing score, and they've been doing it together today, Anthony. Yeah, it's been a nice combination. I mean, uh, Fields is a dual threat quarterback. There's a reason why, because he can move with his legs. But they're not selling the package deal with him. Fromm obviously happy for him. And Jim Shamey calls down. Fromm's usually picking up that phone, but this time he wants to talk to Justin it's Fields. You. <laughs> and he passes it along. But, uh, you know, is there no better teammate than Jake Fromm? He's the ultimate leader. He's comfortable in his skill set. And again, getting these plays valuable time is, is helpful. They'll run the jet sweep to Demetrius Roberts and the transfer from Cal and a late flag, maybe a late hit to tack on some yardage. I see Demetrius Robertson right there and Rand Randolph kind of gives a late push. After the play was over, late hit, number 29 on the defense. Penalty is 15 yards, added to the end of the run, first down. So 23 yards plus here.
David Smith, our referee today. You can see by his shirt, by the way, how much the wind is now starting to pick up. We've got some clouds rolling in here to Athens. Fields will throw, and he's got a first down. That's Holloman down inside the 40 and a gain of 14. That offensive front, Mays, Kinley, Gilliard, Cleveland, Isaiah Wilson continuing to help move those chains. Showing blitz up the middle. Field stays on his feet, incomplete. Yeah, you, you referenced it, of course, the turnover last year when Jacob Eason started the season at quarterback, got hurt in the opener, Fromm took over, and it helped engineer that huge win at Notre Dame, and that really got things rolling. Ultimately, Fromm at the helm when they uh, win the Rose Bowl, beat Oklahoma in the semis, and then advance to the championship game. And then Justin Fields arrives, the overall number one recruit. And for Georgia early in the season, as he hooks up with Isaac Nauta, they have had ample opportunity, Anthony, to get both guys in games. Yeah, you never know what happens throughout the season. Uh, you know, Fields a very mature player. He's got the size already for sure. He's got a big arm. He's not making, he won't make the big mistakes, at least early on in this season, as far as trying to force balls in. It's a good job going one to two there, trying to get Crumpton on the outside, comes back to his tight end. So, you know, again, he, he's seeing the field. He's not just, a, we call him dual threat, Beth. He's not just a runner. He, yeah. he's, a, he's a good passer as well. That line again picks up the pressure up the middle. James Cook with the carry. Freshman out of Miami. He's their speed back. Patterson with the tackle. Dalvin Cook's brother. Um, I'll tell you, man, he's a special player. You know, they talked about some packages they're going to try to use with him because of his ability to catch the football with him and Swift. Um, we'll look for that moving forward this season, but a special backfield this year for Georgia. Here's another guy, Herrian, falling his way down inside the 20. Looks like they'll mark him at the 18-yard line. That'll bring up third and a couple. Be physical, right? Stick your shoulder down. That's a good job by Thomas, too, but two guys battle now. Here's the problem. With a big, ugly start coming down to help out in the back, you got no shot. <laughs> Cleveland, number 74, is 340 pounds. That's what he was on weigh-in day. I don't know what he is now coming out of halftime, but he, he's a load at the right guard position. Third and short out of the eye here. Harrion got it. Down to the 10. We talked about the undersized defensive line of Middle Tennessee. And they got guys that are 250, 255, 245. See number 95, he's, he's, three, he's 245. So these guys, again, it's going to be tough to hold up. Initially coming in the first half fighting, yes. But now they're getting into the second half, they're going to start wearing down a lot more. Under eight minutes to go to the third. They'll go back to Harrion. The sidestep down to about the eight-yard line. Is more than happy to work that clock and uh, flex their muscles a little bit here down in the red zone. They know there's a possibility that that guy looms off in the distance. <laughs> they won't see each other in the regular season, but... Alabama perhaps awaits in Atlanta and beyond. Tua and the fellas have Ole Miss tonight. Cook is back in a tailback. He's got it and wrapped up immediately, met in the backfield. You know, before the game, uh, when I was watching Fields warm up, he was in that exact spot where he's out on the field now, throwing the, the route to the corner left of the end zone with his receivers, throwing it, throwing it, throwing it, right to our camera, to be quite honest with you. Maybe they work a little route here. Maybe this is something in the red zone he wanted to get better at in practice. See if that comes up. He's got Robertson down to that side of the field. 
The third down throw into the end zone, touchdown! Jason Stanley with the catch, there's a flag down. Offside on the defense, number 40. Penalty is declined. Result of the play, touchdown. Nice throw here. It's going to be a square in by Stanley. He's going to come right in the middle of your screen. Backers sliding out because of the tight end. Opens up a big hole. And Stanley makes sure he catches the ball with two hands and brings it in. Justin Fields goes three for four, 34 yards on that drive. And a 48-7 Georgia lead. When we come back, you think there's a big boxing match tonight. They got nothing on Rocky and the real deal when we return. Georgia running back Elijah Holyfield over 100 yards on the day, but I'm joined right now with his dad, the champ, the four-time champ, Evander Holyfield. Evander, look, you've been in some big-time environments in the ring. How does it compare being here at Georgia? Um, uh, it's great atmosphere. Great atmosphere. Now, how cool is it for you to see your son out there having a lot of success? Well, it's, it's always good because the fact of the matter is that, you know, it's a lot of pressure, and people talk about what he can do and what he can't do. Now he get an opportunity to prove that he can do it. Now, any chance of seeing you back in the ring? Well, only against Rocky. Yeah. Only against, no, that's my name. <laughs> Here, let me see what you got. Give me one more jab right there. Oh, there it is. <laughs> He's still got it, champ. You're the best. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, what a treat for Evander to watch Elijah go. Had the big 66-yard run in the... First half, and that is uh, that was the trigger to get him a new career high, 100 yards today. Between the tackles, he's a strong back, compact in size, and he's able to break tackles here. He's showing off a little bit of his speed. His dad's doing some more jab work on the sidelines just in case he comes back against Rocky. And then here comes his son again in between the guard, the center gaps, and he's a strong, tough runner. And you heard his father talking about proven things proving himself and what he can do when you have a stable of backs like georgia does you've got to consistently go out there and prove yourself today he's done that he got most of those yards in the first half stock still able to drop it off underneath the brad anderson we, all, we opened up can of worms now now he's uh people are starting to oh he came out of his chair that was a great interview by the way i mean that's about as good an interview you can get on a game day outside of football he still got it too man the hands hurting a little bit man. i don't know yeah, i would have fell right on my face he would have knocked me out with the punch in my hand i just would have fell back and just went down rocky and the real deal who doesn't want to talk to a guy that's a boxer named Rocky, right? I mean, that's an easy interview, man. What's your name? Huh? Rocky. Trust me, I used that, Anthony. I had to use everything I had to get the champ, but he was a really, really cool guy, really sweet guy. That was awesome. And there's the, there's the jab punches. and Rocky, you know, hey, you got uh, you got a lot of space on that 100-acre farm you got back home, man. Maybe, maybe put a gym, a ring, and he can come and train. Hey, Rocky <laughs> style, get the old chains out and, the, you know, hauling the logs. Get your turtles, cuff and link. <laughs> we'll have a run on third down, and Brent will get it and will not take a dive and ends up taking a hit. The helmet popped off briefly, but it stayed on his noggin in a gain of 11. The stock, stock still does not want to slide. He doesn't even know how to do it, because you see right there, he usually dips his shoulder down, and then look, he, he's going to take some shots. That's the one thing I worry about him when he plays. Helmet comes flying off, falls down on his knees. He's such a tough player, huge competitor. I talked to his dad about it, and he said, listen, man, I trust my son in those situations. I let him go out there and be competitive and do those things, and he's going to be one heck of a quarterback to try to stop in conference play this year. What was the phrase he used? Another one from, from Bobby Bowden. I'd rather say whoa than sick him. So he, it's, it's be aggressive first and foremost for the Blue Raiders and his son. And a stumble in the backfield. Terrell West tripped over his quarterback. Georgia getting deep now in their, in their roster with players coming in, getting some uh, opportunities to play. 
uh, early on here in the second half. Trying to convert the third down. They'll roll them out. Brenton Cox chasing them. And they've got a first down to Patrick Smith. Number 24, Zach Dobson, also into the game right now at wide receiver. The freshman from Knoxville with an absolutely amazing story of perseverance for him and his family. Just for Zach to be on the field. And playing at middle, he's to the top of your screen. Coming back from a shoulder surgery last year, enrolled with the team in January. But the even bigger story was the heroism of his younger brother, Xavion. You may recall the story from back in 2015. A young man jumping in front of bullets on a drive-by shooting in Knoxville to save the lives of three younger women that were with him at the time. And that was Zach's brother, Xavion, who posthumously was awarded with the ESPN Arthur Ashe Courage Award that season. And Zach has fought through all of that football, helping him every step of the way. The pitch here and the run for West. And there are the two brothers from their younger days. The, the shooting took place back in 2015. That is Xavion wearing number 24. Zach took over the 24 jersey at Fulton High School. And when he arrived at Middle Tennessee, Ty Lee had 24, but agreed to give it up to Zach so he could wear it to honor his brother throughout his college career. They're going to be close here. And Brent Stockstill immediately turns to the sideline and says, we're about an inch or so short. Let's go for it as Zach Dobson looks on. Ty Lee, who's uh, the junior from Georgia, Moultrie, Georgia, with a catch in 29 consecutive games now. And they'll get a chance to stay out a little longer. West tripped up by Otis Reese. And this are, these are some of the things that happen now when you get deep into your roster. Are these guys that are not taking snaps that the ones are, are they getting the mental reps? And those guys that are, that can make plays at this time in the game, I think they're going to move up the list and contribute to this football team, and that's what Kirby Smart is looking for from this crew on the field now. First and ten, approaching a minute to go here in the third. Catch is made. Down to the 22-yard line. It's Casey. Second down at six. Quarterback keeper. Nowhere to go with it. The dogs were everywhere. Led by Brenton Cox, and it's third down. Stock still, you know, their vertical passing game is something we haven't been able to see. That was big last week in their game where they had a lot of success. Stock still had five touchdown passes at 400 yards. So, again, this it, it changes week to week, obviously, early on when you're playing a team like Georgia. But look out for Stock still. He's going to put up some big numbers this year. They'll head to the other end to start the fourth quarter with Middle Tennessee on the move. And... Georgia in control today in Athens. Looking for the knockout blow as they get set for Missouri next week. The ESPN app now with ESPN Plus. Get more ESPN and download now.
Well, tonight on College Football Primetime, presented by Hampton by Hilton, it's Nick Saban in number one Alabama down at Oxford to take on Ole Miss. Tonight at 7 Eastern, 6 Central on ESPN and live on the ESPN app. Of course, the Rebels beat the Tide back in 2014, 2015, but uh, Alabama mauled them last year. Third and four here for middle. Incomplete. They've really liked Patrick Smith on third down today, but now they're looking at a fourth and four. You know, Alabama's an interesting team, obviously, going against Ole Miss. Uh, it'll be your first, you know, real challenge for them, and, and Tua has been fantastic. I think when I watch him as a quarterback, his ability to see the receivers, get his eyes to the right place, that's where he's kind of advanced himself between Jalen Hurts, and that's what separated him on being on the field. And the one thing, though, that I worry about with him is he takes a little bit of risk once in a while. How much of that can Nick Saban take in those big games? The flag on fourth down into the end zone incomplete. Intended for Ty Lee, broken up by Eric Stokes. Illegal formation on the offense. Five players in the backfield. That penalty is declined. First down, Georgia. Georgia will take over on downs with the 49-7 lead here in Athens. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Well in hand for Georgia here in Athens. You can watch a lot of uh, the SEC on uh, television today. Notable, of course, LSU and Auburn. Later tonight, it's Alabama Ole Miss. I think a lot of people are intrigued by what Joe Moorhead's doing at Mississippi State. They face the Raging Cajuns tonight. And then can Missouri stay unbeaten on the road against Purdue to set up a big showdown with Georgia in Columbia next week? And we've got a... A new quarterback coming in. It's Matthew Downing for Georgia. To start out this fourth quarter. He'll hand it off to James Cook. Hit the backfield for a loss. LSU, Beth Burrow uh, in the football game against Miami had a nice game, right? I don't know if I'm buying him quite yet. Oh. Uh, you know, he, he had some nice throws, but he was a below 50% passing percentage. And he's going to have to deal with the defensive line of Auburn in this game and this is I think a big statement game for LSU I know Miami was a big kickoff game we're, we're not sure where Miami is but LSU Auburn we saw Auburn against Washington that was a blow for blow battle and uh, we'll see how he deals with it and Ontavius Russell at the D tackle position he's going to have some players in his face can he make those completions and move the football and Anthony, Joe Burrow's facing an Auburn defense hitting on all cylinders. Nine sacks and six turnovers on the season. Those boys are coming. Cook again on the yeah, that's a high-scoring Auburn team, too, averaging uh, nearly 500 yards and uh, right at 42 points per game. Led by Jared Stidham. I think we saw Mizzou, Purdue on that board. I mean, listen, mm -hmm. next week, Georgia has Missouri. And Mizzou's going to have to come out and finish the deal. They're, they have expectations as well this season. We got firsthand glance of their offense. And Drew Locke, one of the best quarterbacks in the country. This is a matchup, at, at least offensively versus defensively. I'm intrigued to watch next week with Mizzou, Georgia. Right on the screen, the cook. The nice cutback. And he's got some green grass. Out across the 40 at a first down. A run of 24 there for James after the catch. A lot of speed out of the position. Cook is very good catching the ball. Good job tracking, and he's got great vision. You know, he showed that in week one, uh, and he's doing it again. He's just an elusive back, and the stable is full for this team, and they all do different things, but they do it at a very high level, and they are replacing two studs now. Nick Chubb, Sony Michelle, those are no slouches. You know, first round and top of the second round draft pick. So uh, a lot of big shoes to be filled, but they feel really good about their position. A couple of catches, 37 yards for Cook. Now it's Prather Hudson who will get a carry. Gains one. Prather Hudson on the carry for Georgia. And Anthony mentioned the running backs. What a weapon to have as you get into the end of the third quarter, fourth quarter, as you get an SEC play just to bring in those fresh set of legs, especially now with linebackers being a little bit more undersized these days. That's a tremendous weapon. 
injured player is uh, Cordell Hudson. And we'll take a quick timeout. Be right back. Zaga checking out the action today in Athens, uh, stepping outside of his uh, air-conditioned doghouse. I think Rocky was, oh, now they're shutting the door, but he can still see the field from that vantage point. I think Rocky checked that out. Well, I did, Beth, and what you can't see probably is there's a big bag of ice in there, so it's air-conditioned and a bad guy. He's the only person on this field that's not bacon right now. <laughs> I guess my one question is, how is the booth not air-conditioned and the doghouse is? I, I hey, I'll go take priority, okay? <laughs> First and foremost, the toss, Kiaris Jackson. Freshman out of Fort Valley, Georgia. One of the top wide receiver recruits in this last class, Peach County High School. And we've got another injury. That's Roshim Collins getting some attention, and we'll be back in a moment. So here's a little preview for you. Next Saturday, noon Eastern on ESPN, that Georgia defense will try and shut down Drew Locke in the Mizzou O. Yeah, you know, Drew Locke looked really impressive. Uh, we were out there in Columbia last week, and uh, the new offensive system that they have is much more geared to helping the quarterback have more success. I think the one thing we, we know about Drew Locke is the ups and downs he had. We know he had a ton of yards. We know he had a ton of touchdowns. But some of the decisions he made last season were poor. We know he's a, a deep ball specialist. He's been doing that last year. He's been doing it again this year as well. He's getting his balls to a bunch of different weapons on the field. He utilized the tight end quite a bit more. And he feels a lot confident. We talked to him. He just feels comfortable. He's not making the crucial mistakes in the games. And I think, you know, this year, he didn't have those big wins and big opportunities against some of the better teams in the SEC. It was all against some of the losing teams. This year, they're trying to flip the script a little bit. Barry Odom thinks he's got probably his best team since he's been there. Rattled off the uh, six wins to end last year and get to the bowl game. Rocky? Yeah, and I think for Drew Locke, remember, this is his third offensive coordinator in his, in, you know, in his third year kind of in this sort of style, but a new system this year with Derek Dooley. So I think he'll continue to develop. We saw that last week, first quarter, not so much. And then by the end of the second quarter and then the second half, he looked to really thrive in that offense. They just have a plan now. It just seemed like first and second down, they're able to get positive yards and put themselves in favorable positions. I think that they're going to really try hard to run the game. Crockett at running back. They got some depth there. They feel good about it. If they can get a good mix and balance, keep Georgia on their heels, maybe they can, you know, put some, you know, do some damage a little bit. Just off of watching this film, what Middle Tennessee has done, at least in the running game, per se, since Georgia's held, uh, held in check throughout. 49-7. Georgia with the lead. Middle Tennessee with the ball when we come back. Washington and Utah wrap up on ESPN. Be sure to stick around for Sports Center with Stan and Neal. They'll have uh, Kirk Herbstreit joining the show after the Ohio State TCU game. All the moments from around the country and reactions to the Canelo Triple G fight. Sports Center at 1 a.m. Eastern. Big story around college football so far today is a Syracuse 20 to nothing lead over Florida State. They are almost into the fourth quarter in the Carrier Dome as the problems continue for FSU. Here is one of their former quarterbacks, Rick Stockstill. He was in Tallahassee the early days of Bobby Bowden back in the late 70s, early 80s. Had some good success with a couple of trips to the Orange Bowl, a couple of 10-win seasons and top 10 finishes for Rick at the helm. There he is in action. Look at that dual threat right there. <laughs> Little targeting penalty at the end, and you got the old school wristbands, sweatbands going. Looked a little tired there as well on that play. <laughs> you want to talk about a, a coaching tree and some guys of influence. Bobby Bowden, of course, his coach, then Rick 
somehow managed to coach at both Clemson and South Carolina. For Danny Ford, Terry Bowden, Lou Holtz, and Steve Spurrier. Now a chance to pass that knowledge on to his son Brent, who's been his quarterback the last three years. And that was uh, Brent 11 years ago, early in Dad's tenure at Middle. That's pretty cool, man. That's awesome, yeah. you know, having your son uh, be a part of it. And, you know, look, he, he didn't bring his son on to the school because, you know, it's his son. He brought him on because he's a good football player, yeah. and, he, and he earned the right to be out there. And one thing I can tell you, the one quality that exudes out of his son is toughness. That, that's one thing no one can question out of Brent Stockstill, and I think that's why the team has rallied around him so much the last couple of years. said, I don't care if you win the Heisman or never get off the bench. You'll still be able to share that father-son relationship with me and all the moments that we've had together. In times that I've seen, you know, sons be on the same team as, as the father, it's usually the father's harder on the son than he is any other player. So <laughs> there's none of this uh, favoritism stuff. Works for daughters, too. I played for my dad. There you go. Yeah. So you can attest to it, yeah. yeah. Chase Cunningham is the new quarterback right here out of Knoxville, Tennessee, the freshman getting the call. Other upsets that are uh, working on right now. Troy is leading Nebraska midway through the fourth quarter. And Temple up a couple of scores on Maryland. Future Georgia opponents, Tennessee and Kentucky, both rolling today. Notre Dame has taken the early 3-0 lead over Vandy. Oklahoma right now up 10 at Iowa State. They've gone to the fourth. And getting the edge is Kylan Stribble. Here's your, uh, here's your CFP playoff predictor. This changes, folks. The numbers will change every day based on uh, outcomes. Alabama, Ohio State, Clemson, and Georgia, Oklahoma both tied for that final spot in the playoff at about 50% chance that those two would get in, one or the other. Auburn was down there at 10%. That could change a bit, though, based on the LSU score. And they probably had the best win so far early in the season, Beth, against Washington. Mm -hmm. uh, but they do have an intense schedule uh, throughout the season, so... Yeah, we'll see what happens. I think we still need to learn a lot. I know those percentages look good uh, on our graphics, but these teams got to start getting into the SEC schedule, start getting into their own schedule. Oklahoma right now getting into their schedule. They're getting a close one with Iowa State. So you just don't know. Any given Saturday, a team can step up and give you their best game, and you got to be ready for it. Clock running now under six minutes to go. On a day of big plays for Georgia. And a lot of different guys getting in on the act. Hardman, Holloman, Simmons, Ridley, Fields, Stanley, all getting in on the scorecard today. Miko Hardman, one of their dynamic playmakers. I'm really impressed with him. We got me and Rocky the last two weeks ago got to do a sit down with him and get to know him a little bit he's got a great personality and he is expecting to have a monster season he's he's shown up early in the season so far and he's going to be uh someone that this this conference is going to have to deal with week in and week out looks like they're going to have the yardage for the first down. And Anthony mentioned me, Cole Hardman. Noticed two weeks ago, and same thing the day before the game. Cole Hardman's the guy getting the wide receivers up before the game, kind of coaching some guys up, and seems to be taking on more of that leadership role as well. And that's key. You know, they got a lot of young players that are getting some real play time on both offense and defense. Got to be on the same page. You got to come together, work together. 
you know, those those five star, four stars, freshmen and sophomores that come on the field, they got the talent. It's it's buying in, understanding the system, doing the right things on game day when their numbers called. And if they can get that going and get those talented players as well as the guys that are here, that that's huge. Well, this week on Monday Night Football, Russell Wilson and the Seahawks are in Chicago to take on Roquan Smith and the Bears and Khalil Mack. Coverage begins at 6 Eastern with Monday Night Countdown served by Applebee's. Bottom by the game at 8.15 on ESPN. Oh, boy. That was a lot of fun last week watching the Darnold debut with uh, Brian Greasy and Laura Rutledge out in Detroit. It's the J-E-T-S. Yes, yes, yes. Got the big win. What a game. Your Sam, Jets, Anthony. I'll tell you, Sam Darnold has been impressive. Uh, it's tough to come in and play quarterback as a rookie. And... Uh, that performance, and even coming back from the pick six, Ben, mm -hmm. I mean, you were probably as shocked as I was. That, 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 that's about as bad as it could go on the first play yeah. of your entire career on game one, and that's yeah, that was every Jet fan on the first play of Sam Darnold. Kind of you know who right else threw a down. pick on his very first pass attempt? Brett Favre. Pretty good player. So, yeah, that's, that may not be bad shoes to follow. Jameis Winston yeah. as well. Jameis as well, yeah. So yeah. you guys had plenty of ammo to back that one up, which was good. Uh, <laughs> good work. And, you know, how was Brian? Was he uh, was it tough getting you know, acclimated? He was, well, uh, he was no tight end. <laughs> so it was a little different perspective yeah. that he was, you know, calling the game from. He's no linebacker. Brian was my roommate with the Bucks, and uh, mm -hmm. I gave you a lot of dirt on him. I so kept hopefully, it to uh, myself. I'm okay, a good team did. player. <laughs> Shared all that behind the scenes. Guys, to add to that list, I recall Andy Dalton in his first preseason oh. game threw a pick. <laughs> I, live in, I live in Cincinnati, and uh, those things stand out. <laughs> Can we get that back shot again? I, I could have sworn I saw Andy Dalton on the field right there. Hey, yeah. Redheads, don't back the oh, bus never up mind. over I'm sorry. the Redheads. Come on, man. I get confused for him all the time in Cincinnati. Just don't ask if I'm him when it's like 1230 and I'm leaving the airport because they play at 1, okay? Uh, you know, I'm him if you're buying me a beer. Is that what you're asking That's me? right. If it works out to my benefit, then yes. That's me. Just toss Rocky a football. Once he throws it, everybody kind of gets the picture. Correct. <laughs> That's one punt George is not going to be able to catch today. Yeah. There's flags all over the place. 43 yards on the punt. Crumpton, Philly kid, him and Swift, two Philadelphia products, expanding the recruiting tree. I like to see that. Oh, the, the footprint is wide. It's everywhere now for Georgia on the recruiting trail. Illegal equipment on the defense. There were two number 25s on the defense. Now penalties declined. First down, Georgia. We'll take a timeout and be right back. We'll kick off your week two of the NFL Sunday at 10 Eastern on ESPN. It's Sunday NFL Countdown presented by Snickers. Who had a better week one than James Conner? Closer look at his incredible journey to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Plus, you got Mossed, Randy Moss with the week's best catches, and as always, it's available live on the ESPN app, so you can watch it anywhere you go on your Sunday morning. <laughs> Under two minutes, they are sticking it out to the end. And a 49-7 Georgia lead. They will go to 3-0, and and a big road trip coming up at Missouri next Saturday. And that's already set for ESPN at noon Eastern. So actually it'll be 11 a.m. local when the dogs get out there. Fromm with the three touchdown passes in the first half. Justin Fields, his first career rushing touchdown. Nicole Hardman with a punt return TD today. And the defense holding Middle Tennessee to just seven points.
Yeah, tough day for Coach Stockhill, but I'll say this, uh, you know, he understands there's a bigger picture here. Um, you can pull certain things out of this game and build from it. I think they had some success on, on first down runs. He's got to be happy about that. He was down a running back. He didn't have his uh, full gamut of players there. So, again, coming to Georgia, obviously a tough place to play. You're outmatched a bit. But the future is bright this season for this Middle Tennessee State team. We'll get back into Conference USA play. And there it is. There's your final snap. Kirby Smart and the third-ranked Georgia Bulldogs improved to 3-0 oh as they beat Rick Stockstill and Middle Tennessee. 49-7 is the final today in Athens. seconds ticking away and we'll take the break and be right back in a moment. So many explosive plays today offensively. What enabled those to happen? Well, a lot of hard work, uh, a lot of toughness. This guy made several of them just making people miss. And guys that we didn't block, he still made them miss. But good players will do that for you. Absolutely. I know you got to watch the tape, but you really dive into the SEC schedule next week. Anything jump out in terms of things you got to do better as you start that that road there yeah stupid silly penalties we got to do a better job tackling on defense thought we created some turnovers thought offense was explosive but third down they gave us some pressures that frustrated us just got to do a better job not getting those third and longs congrats coach thank you all right rocky thank you very much and a big win for georgia 49 to 7 a 100 yard rushing day for elijah holyfield as the Bulldogs improve to 3-0. Up next, it's Golden Boy Boxing. For our entire crew, we'll see you down the road.